The Martini Henry was a breech-loading single-shot lever-actuated rifle used by the British Army. It first entered service in 1871, eventually replacing the Snyder Renfield, a muzzle loader converted to the cartridge system. Martini Henry variants were used throughout the British Empire for 30 years. It combined the dropping block action first developed by Henry O. Peabody, in his Peabody rifle, and improved by the Swiss designer Friedrich von Martini, combined with the polygonal barrel rifling designed by Scotsman Alexander Henry. Though the Snyder was the first breech loader firing a metallic cartridge in regular British service, the Martini was designed from the outset as a breech loader and was both faster firing and had a longer range. 1. There were four main marks of the Martini Henry rifle produced, Mark I, released in June 1871, Mark II, Mark III, and Mark IV. There was also an 1877 carbine version with variations that included a garrison artillery carbine, an artillery carbine, Mark I, Mark II, and Mark III, and smaller versions designed as training rifles for military cadets. The Mark IV Martini Henry rifle ended production in the year 1889, but remained in service throughout the British Empire until the end of the First World War. It was seen in use by some Afghan tribesmen as late as the Soviet invasion. Early in 2010 and 2011, United States Marines recovered at least three from various Taliban weapons caches in Marja. 2. In April 2011, another Martini Henry rifle was found near Oregon in Pactica province by United States Army's 101st Airborne Division, Air Assault. The Martini Henry was copied on a large scale by Northwest Frontier Province gunsmiths. Their weapons were of a poorer quality than those made by Royal Small Arms Factory, Enfield, but accurately copied down to the proof markings. The chief manufacturers were the Adam Lafridi, who lived around the Khyber Pass. The British called such weapons, in the original cambering, the rifles fired around nose tapered head .452 inch, soft hollow based lead bullet, wrapped in a paper patch giving a wider diameter of .460 to .469 inch, it weighed 485 grains. 1. It was crimped in place with two carelessness, grooves on the outside neck of the case, a head of two fiber card or mill board discs, a concave beeswax pod, another card disc and cotton wool filler. This sat on top of the main powder charge inside initially a rimmed brass foil cartridge, later made in drawn brass. The cartridge case was paper lined so as to prevent the chemical reaction between the black powder and the brass. Known today as the .577-450, a bottleneck design with the same base as the .577 cartridge of the Snyder Enfield. It was charged with 85 grains. 5.51 grams, of Curtis and Harvey's No. 6 coarse black powder, 1, notorious for its heavy recoil. 3, the cartridge case was ejected to the rear when the lever was operated.
There's a shock. There's an enemy shock trooper. Look out! Machine gun! Half of the enemy forces are gone. 